10 Shocking and Bizarre Facts About Mobster Gerald Chapman Gerald Chapman, often hailed as America's first public enemy number one, led a life filled with crime, intrigue, and audacity. While his life was extensively chronicled by newspapers and law enforcement, some of his escapades seemed too wild to be true. Here are 12 of the most shocking and strange facts about this notorious mobster. Fact number 1. Early Beginnings as a Pickpocket Born as George Chartres on June 16, 1887, in Brooklyn, New York, Gerald Chapman, as he later became known, embarked on a life of crime right in the heart of the metropolis. Before scaling to the ranks of America's most wanted, he initiated his notorious journey on the dynamic streets of New York City as a pickpocket. But Chapman was no ordinary thief. Dressed sharply and carrying himself with an air of sophistication, he wasn't the type one would suspect of pilfering their belongings. Those who fell prey to his nimble fingers often remarked on his genteel approach to crime, leading to the inception of his epithet, the gentleman bandit. It was amidst the city's hustle and bustle, dodging wary eyes and pursuing officers, that Chapman refined the very skills that would later cement his legacy in the annals of American crime. Number 2. Escape Artist Gerald Chapman seemed to have an uncanny ability to elude incarceration. His most notable escape came in 1921 from the formidable Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. With the aid of saw blades smuggled into the facility, he managed to cut his way to freedom. This escape wasn't just a testament to Chapman's determination but also an embarrassing moment for law enforcement. The audacity of the escape and the subsequent nationwide manhunt made Chapman the stuff of criminal legend and headline news. Number 3. Stole over $2 million in bonds. In a heist that would be remembered for its sheer audacity, in 1921, Gerald Chapman, alongside his well-coordinated gang, targeted a mail truck in New York, making away with bonds valued at over $2 million. This wasn't just a simple heist, it was a statement. Chapman showcased his meticulous planning, understanding of timings, and ruthlessness. The magnitude of the robbery, given the era's valuation, ensured it was a crime that would be spoken of in hushed tones in both law enforcement circles and among fellow criminals for years to come. Number 4. First, Public Enemy Number 1. Long before the likes of John Dillinger or Al Capone held the infamous title, it was Gerald Chapman who was designated as the nation's first public enemy number one. His extensive crime spree, paired with his audacity and ability to elude the law, struck fear into the hearts of many and captured the imagination of the nation. Law enforcement agencies, viewing him as the embodiment of the organized crime menace, used this designation to mark him as their top priority and to rally public support in their quest to capture and convict him. Number 5. Connections with Other Notorious Criminals In the annals of American crime, very few criminals operate in isolation, and Gerald Chapman was no exception. Throughout his tumultuous career, he forged alliances and associations with some of the era's most infamous figures. One such association was with Georgia machine gun Kelly Barnes, a notorious gangster known for his rapid-fire weapon of choice and high-profile kidnappings. The partnership between these two giants of the criminal underworld showcased the interconnected web of America's 20th century gangster landscape and emphasized the extent of Chapman's influence in the criminal world. Number 6. Brutal Execution of a Policeman While many tales of Chapman's criminal career paint a picture of a suave and sophisticated crook, he was not above resorting to brutal violence when cornered. This darker side came to the fore in 1924 when he cold-bloodedly executed policeman James Skelly. This act of violence wasn't just an indication of Chapman's ruthlessness, it also set into motion a series of events that would lead to his eventual capture. The murder of an officer of the law meant that Chapman had a relentless force pursuing him, determined to bring him to justice for his heinous act. Number 7. Fake Death Rumors after Chapman's daring escape from prison, whispers soon began echoing through the criminal underworld and beyond. Tales spread like wildfire that the gentleman bandit had met his end in a high-octane shootout in the distant land of Mexico. The veracity of this tale was embraced by many, perhaps due to Chapman's reputation for living life on the edge. 
However, as time would tell, the man had not met his dramatic end, he was still at large. The very existence of such a rumor paints a picture of the mythic aura that surrounded him, where every event in his life was seen through a lens of drama and intrigue. Number 8. Captured due to his own fame. For many outlaws, anonymity is a shield, but for Chapman, his very fame was a double-edged sword. In 1925, while he was likely believing he was blending in, a sharp-eyed police officer in Muncie, Indiana, recognized him. This was no mere stroke of luck, Chapman's face had graced countless newspaper articles, detailing his exploits. On that fateful day, his celebrity status, which had been an asset in building his criminal empire, became the very reason for his downfall. Number 9. First Federally Executed Criminal Gerald Chapman's life was marked by a series of remarkable firsts, and his end was no different. In 1926, Chapman earned the dubious distinction of becoming the first criminal to face the gallows under the federal jurisdiction. His execution symbolized not just the end of a notorious criminal's reign but also a potent message by the authorities, showcasing their determination to clamp down on high-profile crime. Number 10. Ruthless Loyalty Test Trust, or the lack thereof, is a recurring theme in the underworld. For Chapman, ensuring loyalty within his ranks was paramount. And he had a chilling method to ensure it. To gauge the trustworthiness of new recruits, he orchestrated a macabre theater. A scene would be set where it appeared a member of the gang had betrayed Chapman. With cold precision, Chapman would then feign the execution of the traitor, all while closely observing the reaction of the recruit. This grim test was not just a testament to Chapman's meticulous nature but also a stark reminder of the lengths he was willing to go to in order to maintain his grip on his empire. Number 11. Seduction and Manipulation Chapman's reputation wasn't solely built on his criminal mastermind, his personal allure played a significant role in his rise and continued success. Known for his magnetic personality and undeniable charm, he had a penchant for attracting women from all walks of life. More than mere dalliances, Chapman strategically used these relationships as a tool, often extracting valuable information or seeking protection. Rumors swirled about his romantic entanglements with women from the upper echelons of society. These liaisons weren't just about passion, they were calculated moves, allowing Chapman to gain a deeper understanding of potential targets and to plot his heists with an insider's perspective. Number 12. The Great Prison Bribery Chapman's audacious escape from the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary in 1921 wasn't merely a feat of individual ingenuity. Behind the scenes, a web of corruption and illicit transactions played a pivotal role in facilitating his breakout. Chapman, with his vast network and resources, allegedly orchestrated a series of bribes targeting key guards and officials within the prison. These transactions not only paved the way for his escape but also exposed a deeply rooted rot within the prison system. The public revelation of these corrupt dealings shocked the nation and sparked a wave of inquiries. These investigations aimed to cleanse the penal system of its corrupt elements, with officials vowing to bring integrity back to the institution.